We now introduce a separate topic from the earlier chain rule. Now we're going to take multiple derivatives, but derivatives of the same variable. So now we're strictly back to x and y dictating some output function f, and there's nothing in, that are act, acting as an input to x and y itself, or themselves. So let's consider a simple example here. We've got x e to the y, y over x. We know how to take the derivatives, partial derivatives of that function. So we get e to the y when we're taking the x derivative, and minus y over x squared would be the derivative of that. And y derivative of e to the y is e to the y. y derivative of that would be 1 over x. These derivatives are called the first order partial derivatives because we only took one step down the derivative chain. We took one derivative. Now it's certainly possible to differentiate these functions. We've got new functions, let's differentiate them too. Uh, then the question is, well, we can do a second derivative, but there's two variables still. There's still x and y. So we have to specify what the second variable is that we differentiate with respect to. And the way we're going to write that is the same way we wrote our derivatives earlier, except with the partial derivative symbol, the die. It'll be die squared f di x squared. And that would be a second order partial derivatives because you've taken two derivatives, in this case here, with respect to x twice. So that's going to be our notation, or part of our notation for higher derivatives of functions of two variables. How do we compute this? Well, what we're doing is, if we think of this not as a noun but as a verb, we're taking the function we started with and then we're taking an x derivative of that, and then we're taking the x derivative of that. Now we already calculated the first derivative, it was e to the y minus y over x squared, and then that was our first application. Then we take the derivative of that with respect to x, and we obtain, what do we get? We get zero minus, minus y over minus 2y over x cubed because this is x to the negative 2 and which when we differentiate that we get nine, minus 2 x to the minus 3 and the derivative of e to the y with respect to x is simply 0 because there are no x's it's constant all right so what other partial derivatives can we do well again we can take x and y derivatives so we can think about taking the y derivative first and then the x derivative, that's what this is. y derivative first, then the x derivative. And if we do that, well we already took the y derivative earlier, it was x e to the y plus 1 over x. And then we apply that derivative with respect to x and we get e to the y minus 1 over x squared. x is our variable, e to the y is a constant. Uh, let's do all the mixes and matches. We have four ways to combine x and y if we mix uh, pairs of them. So how would we get that? Well, the other option would be to take the x first derivative and then y. And what would that look like? Well, we said the x derivative of f was e to the y minus y over x squared and then we're taking the y derivative of that right y derivative of that so we'll get e to the y minus 1 over x squared and then last but not least we could take the y derivative twice and that would be taking the y derivative of the y derivative so let's put emphasize that here this term here was the y derivative of f, the first y derivative. So our partial derivative of y of this would be x e to the y, and the derivative of the second term would be 0. And that would complete our catalog of all four possible second derivatives, second order derivatives of our function f. Fair enough. Sorry, I wanted to make one comment here before I go on. Hmm. Look at those two values there for a second. Those are equal. 
just keep that in mind as we go forward and look at a couple more examples. That These two values here were the y derivative differentiated then by x and the x dif derivative then differentiated by y. So distinguishing the order in which we took our derivatives mixing and matching x and y. Let's do the same kind of differentiation for this new function, sine of x squared times y. Very different function. The other one was exponentials and fractions, rationals. This is a trig with nested stuff. So let's see what we get here. We can take the first derivatives. We need those to get the second anyway. Uh, the x derivative would be cos of x squared times y. Chain rule tells, we, tells us we multiply by 2xy when we're done. So the y derivative x derivative would be the y derivative of this expression here. And we'll just do that in place. Um, we've got a product rule here. Let's notice that. The product rule derivative of this would be derivative of the first negative sign x squared y. We're taking the y derivative, so we multiply by an x squared. That's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative with respect to y of the second, which is just 2x. All right. Now let's take a look at the derivatives the other way. Let's take the y derivative first. Uh, the derivative of sine is cos. And then we multiply by the y derivative of the inside. That's 2x. Oops, that's x squared. Sorry. x squared times 1. And that means that if we take the order x first, then or y first, then x, we're asking for the x derivative of what we just created here. And that taking the x derivative. All right, again, product rule. The derivative of the cos is minus sine x squared y times the derivative of the inside, that would be 2xy, all that times x squared, plus the first cos of x squared y times the derivative of the second times 2x. Hmm. Before we go on to the next page, it's worth looking at this form here, in particular this. And this, those look close to identical. These ones, 2xy, 2xy, x squared, x squared, negative sign. Ah, this is not a coincidence. Thank goodness, in fact. Uh, partial derivatives are enough fun as they are. We don't need to do more than we want, more than we have to. Whenever we have multiple derivatives, higher order derivatives, where you're mixing and matching the variables that you differentiate, it doesn't matter what order you take them. Only the variables used in the derivative matter, not the order. So this is a huge time saver and uh, mental effort saver when it comes to calculating partial derivatives uh, through the second and third and fourth orders because we do not have to worry about which way we took uh, the derivatives. As long as we took a derivative with respect to x somewhere and another derivative with respect to y, first, second doesn't matter, then we'll get the same answer as if we'd done it in any other order. So you'll get some practice in the assignments, but what this means in essence is f of x, y only has three unique second order partial derivatives. It'll have the partial with respect to x twice, It'll have the second order derivative with respect to y twice, and it'll have the second order derivative with respect to x and y, which we could call, it doesn't really matter, no one cares, uh, y, x. Those two last second derivatives are identical, so you can use either one. After this, we're going to go and see what these second derivatives might actually mean to us, which is probably more important, uh, not more important, certainly more interesting than the strict calculation. The calculation of second partial derivatives just means applying our regular derivative rules uh, multiple times on the same function.